Hello, my crafting buddies. Thanks for stopping by today. This is RJ, your thrifty crafter. Today I'm here to share in this video my Spellbinder storage tip. Um, let me put this disclaimer out there now. Excuse me. This is not my original idea. I think it was Arlene Butterfly Kisses. Um, and she might have found it for someone, someone else. <clears throat> Excuse me. And so um, I've got a lot of requests for it. So I thought I'd take this moment and do a quick video. So the products that you're going to need. Now, I get 12 by 12 chipboard. I usually get it from um, joannes.com um, um, when it's on sale. So wherever you can find your chipboard, that's the first thing you're going to need. And for this particular project, you're going to need um, 17 pieces. So that means you need, what's that, uh, 7 chipboard, 12, 7, 12 by 12 chipboards should make you 14 pieces of, of, of 6 and a half by um, 6 and a half by 12 um, chipboard pieces. Now for me, um, I didn't want to use my um, trimmer to cut my chipboard so I took my um, 24 pack of 12 by 12 chipboard pieces to my local um, oh my gosh, a Federal Express office and um, they cut them for me. They charged me about four bucks and some change, but I was cool with that because I didn't want to uh, mess up my blades. So I have my chipboard, and once again, you're going to need seven pages will make a book. So you'll have your front and back covers, then you have a sheet, which I call each page. In each page, you have a, a front and a back. So that makes ten pages. All together and what you're going to do is that um, let me show you the magnetic shoes that I use now I find these at my local Lowell's um, hardware store and that's these here right here um, they're called magnetic vent covers they come three in a pack and the size is 8 by 15 now you're going to need two packages of these in order to make one book. Okay, so let me share, let me show you and share with you why. So let me move this out the way. So for each sheet that you make, you're going to take that 8.5 by 15, and on the 15 inch side, that's the long side, you're going to cut it at 11 inches. And when you do that, it's going to leave you with a piece like this that's about four by, what's that? Four by eight inches. Don't discard that. You hold on to that because you can always use that. So once you, once you continue and you're finished, you should have a total of 14. Am I right? Let's see. Two. Four. Six, I'm sorry, ten, eight, ten. So, okay, I, I take that back. So, I apologize. So, you're still going to have to use two packages of the vent shape, um, vent um, magnetic strips, but you need ten of the twelve, I'm sorry, eleven by four inch strips, which you just cut into half. And then cut again, you're going to need a total of 10 of those, and you're going to need um, 7 6 by 12 chipboard pieces. And then once you have all those, um, you now how I buy mines is unfortunately right now um, I was moving things around and I broke the handle on my um, bind it all. So I'm going to have to come up with another um, solution for putting my um, binding um, on the sides. But um, what I do is that I take, now, this white piece of plastic that's the, it, that has the adhesive side on it. Now, it can be difficult sometimes, so 
you're gonna either have to use your nail or you're gonna have to dig in there to get that one little that little layer off. But once you do, there is adhesive on there, you guys. But for me, um, it's it. You know, I live in a humid area and it's about to start getting hot. So I normally do is I take my glue stick. Hold on, you guys. I'm trying to get this apart so I can share with you. I usually normally take my glue stick and rub it against the, the adhesive side. See, I'm telling you guys, yeah. Um, once you get the hang of this, it's pretty easy to get them off. But you just got to get um, get it started. And, and, and once you got your technique and your uh, assembly going, it'll work. But see where it... Oh, wow. It took the plastic off and everything too. Hey, I don't know if this is really good. Look, you guys, it's supposed to have it. The, the this is supposed to be an adhesive side, and um, I don't know what's going on. I might have to take this batch back, but because this backs this back side, you guys, is supposed to peel off, and that's where you add your adhesive. But it's not um, it's not doing that. So maybe I just need to just put some glue on top of it and lay it like that. Because I apologize for that. Because my old my um, ones that I did from last year, they're supposed to um, sorry you guys, I'm trying. To uh, pay attention to this and this no I don't know that they s changed the brand well I'm sorry not the brand the style because this is not this doesn't have an adhesive back on them like they used to so what I normally do in a situation like that so just to get it out the way because um, I'm sorry you guys I don't know why this happened because it's it's when I bought my first um, batch um, last year, when I had to make more, I didn't have this issue. But I usually take my glue stick, rub it all over the surface, to so make sure you got it um, nicely adhered with your glue. That is so funny. I tell you, when you do videos, anything that can go wrong will. So, okay, this one's all nice and sticky, you guys. So, what I normally do is that um, I give myself a quarter. I give myself a quarter of an inch here or more. I usually give a half an inch. I give a half an inch on this uh, a border where my binding is going to be. And usually this is the best way I do I just usually just center it in the middle. And it still gives me enough room to um, adhere. Still have uh, room to put my um, bindings if I wanted to do it that way as well. So this is, this is how I normally do it. And then you continue on to all um, um, five pages. And if you have a bind it all or a zutter um, and you know how to use that, I don't have anything to sh um, share with you guys how to uh, put it together. But you would bind them all up and it would come out like this. And this is what you will get. And this is the finished product once it's done. Oh, and you guys, um, normally with Spellbinders dies. You can pretty much, as long as it's in a 4x4 or maybe even a 5x5, you can get two sets of dies on one sheet. But that's not always the case because when the dies get bigger like these here, um, so even though that I have them slid to the side, sometimes they kind of you know move around. So you have to consider that too. And then for me is that this is all my uh, labels dies. So I have it in one place. So I'm kind of cool with that because I'm the only one that deals with them. See how the variation the variations are, so you know you can get two. You maybe can get two sets on it. It just depends on the set. 
All right. I hope you guys um, this helped you guys and um, to get your collection all together in one spot. Um, if you do do this one, please share with me. I'd love to see your um, how did you um, store yours as well, and how did you decorate them, and all that good stuff. All right, you guys. Thanks so much for your time. I really do appreciate it. As always, in parting, I want to wish you peace, love, and blessings. Until next time. Take care. Bye for now.